Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Okay, interesting topic today. We are talking about quadriceps tendon ruptures or tears. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, sometimes it feels like that for people. It can be, it can be acute and can be serious for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. It's an important topic and pretty soon you're going to know all about it. All right, quadriceps so, tendon. What is the quadriceps tendon? Quad. Quad- the quad, the quadricep tendon is an integral part of the extensor mechanism of your knee. Okay. So the extensor mechanism of your knee is the mechanism that does just that, extends your knee. Strains your knee. It consists of the quadricep tendon, yep. the patella, the patellar tendon or ligament, depending yep. on how you want to call it, and where it inserts into the tibia. Right. So quad, quad meaning four. Yeah. So there are four muscles that combine together to insert into the top of the patella. Mm-hmm. And then like you said, the patella then goes down, then the ligament connects it, and that's what allows us to straighten our leg. So when that, when that tendon ruptures, what happens? Can't straighten your leg. Right. So people are going to have, if their leg's hanging over, so you're sitting in a chair, you can't straighten it. Or if you're lying on your back, you can't lift your leg off the ground. And miraculously, somehow this is often, not often, but this is a missed injury. Sometimes, sometimes I've seen that before. People think you have an ACL or something like that. Sprain my knee. Yes. Okay. And, and it's actually missed. And you'll go to an, a clinic, an emergency room or something, and it can be a missed injury. And then, which is a big deal because as you're going to soon find out, the treatment for it is best done within two weeks of the injury. It's time sensitive. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so how, so how does this happen? Like what are people doing when this happens? Okay. So for the quadricep tendon to rupture, it has to experience a massive tensile load. Right. So that means uh, planting your leg down with your knee bent a little bit. Right. Okay. A hard plant down. The forces that go through the quadricep tendon at that point are many times higher than body weight. Right. And in tension, it tears. Right. So like slipping on ice, people stepping off a curb, not expecting it, maybe going down the stairs in the dark when you think you're on that last step, but you're on the second last step, Mm -hmm. you know, and you plant hard. Yeah. Um, Could be hiking, could be doing something more physical, like, uh, could be a weekend warrior coming down off the layup. Yep. And all Got of a sudden, you. boom. Okay. So now we know how it happens. Who gets it? Who gets it? People, uh, generally the, um, chronologically older population. Chronologically challenged I'm people. I'm trying to say it in a nice way. People in the second half the of their life. like us. <laughs> I could have said that. But no, if you're a bit older. Yeah. yeah. So over 50 is more common to rupture your quad tendon. Under 50, if you have a, a soft tissue injury to your knee, more commonly, it's your patellar tendon. If you're going to disrupt the extensor mechanism, yeah. yeah, over 50 above the patella, lower than 50 below the patella. Right. Okay. And men and women equally? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty close. I feel yeah. like I've seen way more men with it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in my practice. And women walk more carefully. <laughs> they're maybe more, They're more sensible. Yes. Um, okay. So you go to the hospital, you get examined. So you just mentioned that physical examination is the diagnostic criteria. Any special tests that we do for this injury? Uh, well, the physical exam, the main thing is cannot do a straight leg raise. Right. Race. And what will people see? So say you're not at the hospital, but you're looking at your leg. And you're lying and down, you're trying to lift your leg up straight and the knee bends. Right. It's going to be swollen, might yeah. be bruised. You might be actually able to feel a gap or a little defect or a divot above your kneecap. Yeah. yeah. Your and kneecap might sag a bit and it'll it's hurt. hurt. Okay. Yeah. So investigation, um, an ultrasound is usually, well, x- always get an x-ray whenever yeah. you have an injury, we always get an x-ray. And sometimes on x-ray, the quadricep tendon will rupture and take a little tiny piece of bone with it and you'll see that floating yep. up high on the x-ray. Or the kneecap sometimes sags a little yeah. bit down. Yeah, that's the x-ray finding, but really the imaging of choice to make the diagnosis is, is an ultrasound right. or an MRI. Yeah, uh, but which ultra- is not needed. Yeah. yeah, an ultrasound usually gets that diagnosis pretty good. Okay. Now what are you going to do? Treatment. Um, treatment. All right. Just walk it off. Okay. <laughs> Actually, you can't walk, you can't it, walk off. it off. Let's go back just one step. Who, who gets it? Like, why do people get this? Is there, is there any risk factors? Oh, yeah, there's risk factors. We can factors. talk about. So, uh, steroid use. Always, yep. uh, so, steroids, not anabo- well, anabolic steroids, yes. Yeah. And even things like prednisone, though, like the other kind of medical yep. type steroids. Yeah. Uh, steroid use will do it. There's certain medications that can predis, uh, uh, pose you to it, the quinolones. Yeah, fluoroquinolones, antibiotics. Yeah. Antibiotics. Um, People with dialysis or kidney disease, yep. chronic inflammatory diseases, lupus, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, so yep. things that weaken the soft tissue, and people that have a history of tendonitis. So if you've had pain above your kneecap for a long time, that's probably a sign that those little fibers are yeah. tearing and then they get prone. Yeah, you had like a te- yeah, like a chronic little tear there and it converted to an acute tear. Right, so sure. that's a good point. So can you have a partial tear and a complete tear? Are yeah. those different things? Yeah, you have a partial tear. Yeah. And a, and a small partial tear can often be treated non-operatively. Right. But, oh, I just gave away the treatment. 
a complete tear is treated surgically. Right, surgically. Okay, so you have to have an operation. So is this typically done with the general anesthetic or spinal anesthetic? I think it can be done with either. Either. I yeah. think more commonly, I feel like we get spinals nowadays. Yeah, we nowadays. do have spinals now, but for some reason, if you can't have a spinal, you can do it under Doesn't really general. change the operation. Yeah. Okay. And, and the, the surgery is just that. It's an incision, longitudinal incision over the kneecap and proximal. Yep. And we go in and we identify the stump of the tendon that's torn. We pull it down yep. and reattach it to the patella. Right. Uh, and the way we reattach it is usually uh, a non-absorbable stitch goes up and down in the quadricep tendon yep. and we put it in through some drill holes in the patella into the bone because there's no soft tissue left on the patella to sew to usually. Right, so you kind of lasso it and then put it down through a tunnel and then sew on the bottom side and then so when you're doing that in the operating room your leg is straight and it's really really tight so then you close it all up and then what happens afterwards? Leave that leg straight. You gotta leave that leg straight for like six weeks in a splint. Agreed. Because the suturing, the repair is not strong enough to hold more than a couple of times your body weight. Right. So if you uh, got out of the OR and went ahead and started bending your knee and trying to walk around on it with a bent knee, it'll tear again. Yep. So the suturing technique that we do just holds the tendon there until your body heals it. Right. It's almost always like that. When we fix something in your body uh, with using metal, plates, yep. suture, we're just keeping the tissues together until your body heals it because eventually any metal screws, suture will fail. Will fail. So yep. your body has to heal it. Question. Do you let them walk on it? I, I let them walk on Me it too. in a splint. Yes. So you're walking with like a straight leg. So that still allows you to be mobile because yep. mobilization actually has a lot of very real consequences. So we want people to be able to move as quickly and as normally as they can. So you're not allowed to bend your leg, but you're allowed to put all your weight on your leg typically. Um, what about risks of this operation? Are there any risks? Oh uh, yeah. Well, anytime we do an operation, there's always a risk of yep. the big three, heart attack, stroke, death, blood clot, infection, pneumonia. Right. Bad things can happen. But with this specific operation yep. or injury, uh, the specific injury, you've changed the way the patellofemoral joint works now. Okay. So down the road, you're at risk for patellofemoral arthritis. Right. As well as persistent pain, weakness, and then um, even re-rupture, theoretically. And a leg. A leg. So you can't get your knee it's all the way straight because those muscles can't contract enough. Even though we sew it really tight, yep. you can't often sew it as tight enough. So what leg means is you try and straighten your leg and it bends a little before it goes up straight. Right. So that's an extensor leg. Yeah, and one, one study I read that up to 50% of people actually have persistent pain and, and weakness in that leg, even long term. So mm -hmm. I think the most important thing for people to remember is that this is a, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a long time to recover, often 6 to 12 months, and that there's a real chance that you might not totally get back to normal. The goal is that you can walk into your normal activities and enjoy some of your own recreational activities, but you might not quite get back to where you were. Who knew? Quadricep tendon rupture sounds pretty benign -ish. Yeah. Uh, and, but does have some long-term consequences. However, the majority of the time, you do pretty good. Last question, is there anything you can do to prevent it? Yeah, don't land on a partially flexed knee with all your body weight. So really, the answer is no. Be careful, but in general, yeah. probably no. Yeah. Okay, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.